The year is 1990. The Berlin Wall has just fallen, and in the borough of Friedrichshain in East Berlin, there live 250 gay autonomous squatters living in the rundown buildings on Mainzer Strasse. After a short-lived summer of gay communism, the German police moved to evict all the squatters on the street between the 12th and the 14th of November 1990, which led to the largest civil conflict in the city since the East German uprising of 1953. This became known as the Battle of Tunton House. On the street, there were pubs, cafes and community centres. There was a lesbian house and even an underground information system which connected all the squats in the area and alerted them about any attacks from the neo-Nazis nearby. Every day or so, the emergency phone would ring with another alert about a neo-Nazi attack against blacks or Turks somewhere in the city. And everybody would pour out onto the street with sticks and wearing helmets. The stuff we built downstairs are things we are building since we squatted this house. It is um, to defend ourselves the windows uh, against stones and Molotov cocktails and real dangerous are Molotov cocktails because if everybody's sleeping and fascist gangs come here in the night for a five o'clock throw a Molotov cocktail in the house while well, nobody uh, recognizes it and the house burns. It can happen that Nazi gangs use this day of reunification to attack squads again. It happened already, and it will happen again, I think. Was halten Sie denn von diesen besetzten Häusern? Was ich davon halte? Ja. Ich meine ehrliche Meinung? Ehrlich, sicher. Steinbergwerk, arbeiten, dass sie umfallen. Brot und Wasser. Ganz nett, die kommen ja irgendwo und so. Ich habe auch noch nie jetzt, ob hier drin war. Ich meine, wir sehen ja nun, das ist ein bisschen, wie soll ich das sagen? Ja, so wie Kleine, das sind so, ich meine, die erste Zeit, wie soll ich mal halt Angst der Abhäuse? Frauen miteinander und Männer miteinander. Aber das ist eben eine neue Form. Da muss man sich nicht hm. Vor allem ist es nicht schön, die bezahlen keine Miete und nicht. Und, und bei uns halt tun sie meckern, wenn wir jeden Tag mal Strom nicht bezahlen. Und die nehmen den Strom und alles da ab. Das ist doch nicht richtig. Naja. Sie haben eben gesagt, am liebsten würden Sie eine Handgranate auf sich schmeißen. Ja. Sie das ja ich habe hab auch was anderes da. Das kann man auch machen, denn, wa? hat man immer am Mann so weit, wa? Ja. Ja, man äh, muss sie ja haben jetzt. Ja. Die sind ja nun mal hier in der Mainzer Straße, wa? und äh, wenn die hier kommen, dann kriegen ich sie weg. I decided that the fascism of everyday life wasn't enough. Also dieses, wie gesagt, die sagen, wohnen in der Weitenstraße 122, die seit ihren bisherigen 500 bestehen, ein Fanal für das gesamte Reichsgebiet ist, alle also, weiß ich hier, Personen treffen, die diesem reichsweiten Nationalanlage angehören, in diesem Haus kommuniziert wird, in diesem Haus gesprochen wird. It is a, a, a kind of war. It's yes. a kind of war. It's a kind of civil war. They destroy our cars. They attack us in, the, in, in, in our apartments. Uh, it is a war. And we've got eight deaf people. If this is not war, what is war? Despite negotiations between the Squatter Council and the Magistrate of East Berlin to legalise the squats, it became clear by July of 1990 that the squats would no longer be permitted, and in November 
over 3,000 German police officers from three federal states were sent in with stun grenades, water cannons, tanks and live ammunition. Squatters fought back with stones and Molotov cocktails. We were in London when we heard the news. The West German police had taken over in East Berlin and were invading the Mainzerstrasse. We took the next flight out. Everybody on the plane was talking about it. Even the people in the airport were talking about it. Well, they had a fight. There were tanks and water cannons, and they just, you know, fucked it all up. They built a big barricade. It lasted for two days. Who built the barricade? Yeah, the squatters, of course, and all the people who are living there. They were fighting against the police. Yeah, the barricade was very strong, and the first night the squatters uh, could uh, stay. They warned about it against the police. In the whole area, nearly oh one God. district of the town. The whole district of Friedrichstein is completely Yeah, it's off. war. They had like tanks, everything. I mean, they ordered a lot of police forces from West Germany, yeah. you know. German special forces planned to seize the building by abseiling in, but the mission was ultimately cancelled after the helicopters were targeted with flares by the local residents. By the 14th of November, all of the squatters had been evicted and the Tunton House came to an end. The legacy of the Tunton House has gone on to inspire various other squats across the city, such as Liebig 34, an anarchist feminist squat which lasted from 1990 until 2020. <lacht> Wie ich fühle, wie ich versuche, meiner Tochter und jungen Menschen, mit denen ich heute noch die Möglichkeit habe zu reden, mitzuteilen, dass ich Kommunist bin. Und dass für mich eigentlich die kommunistische, dass die kommunistische Gesellschaftsordnung für mich eigentlich die ist, die, und wenn erst in 200-300 Jahren, die sein wird, die vorherrschend ist. Das ist auch so die Utopie, die ich habe. Und da glaube ich fest dran.